all right, we're just going to have to deal with AC noises because I've been sitting around waiting for it to kick off for an hour and it just won't. Hi everybody! So today's video is going to be on a vintage pattern, but this vintage pattern is pretty easily accessible. So this is the pattern that I'm going to be using. It is Leroy 640. So this is a pattern from the early 1960s and I got this off of a seller on Etsy. So I kind of knew going into it that I was not buying the original pattern, but instead what I was buying was a copy of the original pattern. So a little bit of the story behind how I got this pattern. So I was recovering on this chaise lounge, um, having a, a bit of a rough time after my second Fauci ouchy. Get vaccinated folks, it is very important. And I decided that I would make myself feel better by buying a whole bunch of vintage patterns off of Etsy. So I think I wound up only buying three, but this was one of them. But this came from the UK. So this took a very long time to get in and the shipping was also a pretty high. So I'm going to put somewhere on the screen, somewhere around here, exactly what all of this cost me. And I think part of the reason that it cost so much was from what I understand from a lot of other creators and artists and Etsy shop owners that I follow on Instagram, because of Brexit, shipping into and out of the UK is an absolute nightmare right now because I've ordered from other Etsy shops that have come from other European countries and the shipping was uh, less expensive and it took less time. So I'm not knocking the seller for that. That is something that is probably totally out of her control. So I originally bought this because it has kind of a similar silhouette to what I'm going for with my wedding dress. I'd like something that's a little bit flatter in the front, but with a little bit of volume at the back. And I like having backup plans, even if I'm never going to get to them. So just in case something happens with my original plan for my wedding dress. But I also thought it would be really cute to try to make this for my engagement photo shoot. So spoiler alert, that didn't quite happen. I didn't quite have time to, to fix everything. I had a lot of stuff going on. But I did want to go ahead and finish this dress. So I made it a little bit shorter. So it's not floor length. It's not full like ball gown length. My goal was to cut it kind of just below my knees. So here is the final dress. I made it out of this really cute print. It's full of koi fish. I think it's really pretty. I wound up not having exactly the amount of fabric that I needed to be able to make this because this, after I shrunk it in the wash, wound up shrinking a little bit too much, but I was able to make it work, I still think. And then it has this really nice low back with a couple of pleats. Uh, and I really like how this looks. I really like how it turned out. And the only reason that I'm not wearing this right now is because it is drenched in sweat, which you will see why at the end of this video. So this printing of this pattern is only available in a size 18. With a lot of vintage patterns, it's common to only find one size and they only send you the one size that you order, as opposed to modern patterns, which have a couple of different grades in there. So I'm closer to a size 20, so I knew I was going to have to grade this up a little bit. So I made myself a mock-up, played around with how I wanted to grade it up. I'm going to be honest, I have no idea what I was doing. Um, I have no idea how things worked out the way that they did. Somehow I completely messed up all of the math that I was doing, but I messed it up in such a way that it worked perfectly and it different way. It was very odd. I don't quite know how that happened, but it all worked out. But anyway, if you are interested in seeing my process of how I made this dress, then go ahead and keep on watching. All right, so my goal for tonight is to get a quick mock-up of this pattern done. And what's making me nervous is that the fabric that I have that I want to make this dress out of, I only have three and five eighths of a yard of it, and it's a little bit narrower than the uh, 48 inch material that they're requesting. Say so in the store, it was closer to 44 inches, but I just washed it. So it's probably gonna wind up being a little closer to 42 inches wide. Anyway, I'm not gonna freak out too much about it yet because this is a floor length dress pattern and I held up the pattern to my body and it's gonna wind up hitting with about four inches um, to spare on the floor. So if I was wearing like heels, it would look good with like the two inch hem and all that. But I want this to hit like right below my knees. So I just took my little clear ruler and measured up 16 inches from the bottom and we'll just see if that works. So that's 16 inches taken off from the bottom of the two biggest pieces, which put that together, that's nearly a yard in itself. It's also eliminating the widest part of the widest pattern piece. So I think that should work and I should be able to make that fit. So since I am not familiar with this pattern and how it fits together and there are some complicated pieces where the, the front is partly all in one piece and then it's a lot. So for right now, I'm just gonna add two inches to the center back and just see where that gets me. And that's just going to be part of this mock-up process is looking to see how much extra fabric do I need to add and is that a good place to add it in. So you can't really see much of it because I traced everything out couture style because I just really don't want to bother with pinning on the actual thick paper right now. Um, but I traced out, this is that front piece, that big front piece, and it doesn't, and the pattern piece itself extends off of this fabric by about an inch all the way down. 
um, which is a little frustrating because if it extends off of this, then it's definitely going to extend off of the other fabric because I need to take another look at it, but I think it's only like one-sided. I think there is an up and a down. And I'm already right at the, the two yard mark down there and I haven't even cut out the big, like just the back skirt piece. I'm probably gonna need to go take a trip up to Macon in the next couple of days to go get more of that fabric. I bought up the last that this Joann's had. So I will need to go get more. All right, so it's been a couple of weeks since I sat down to make my mock-up. And the reason for that is surprisingly not out of laziness or procrastination. It's because I got myself a day job. And they're trying to maximize my hours, which I really appreciate because I do like a hefty paycheck. But it also means that I am working nearly full-time hours, even though I am still part-time. And this job is a lot. It takes a lot out of me. I move a lot of heavy things. I'm on my feet all day. It's also in retail. So when I come home at the end of the day, I am very tired and need to go straight to bed so that I can wake up early enough to make my next shift. So I have a couple of days off this weekend, so I want to do my best to try to get this dress churned out as fast as possible. Because after this weekend, my next day off is Thursday, which is the day before we're supposed to leave to go to New Orleans to take pictures, hopefully, in this dress. So I want to try to get this done as quickly as possible. So when I tried on the dress, as expected, it didn't fit because it was made for size 18 and I'm closer to a size 20, 22 right now. So when I made the mock-up, I added a bunch of length to the back of the dress. But once I actually tried it on and saw where all the seam lines fell, I realized that that really wasn't going to work out. And after I got the chance to play with it a little bit, I realized that I'm probably going to add an inch, maybe an inch and a half to each side seam. And I was concerned about the width of the fabric and that the fabric is a little bit narrower than what the pattern calls for. But I'm not going to worry too much about that because the part that's going to wind up getting cut off only really exists to add more fullness to the pleats in the back. And I am okay with the pleats not being 100% full. There is still a lot of volume in the pleats and I do still like the shape of it. I'm also really happy with where the hem is right now, but I have all of my fabric washed and ironed, so I'm going to lay that out and do my best to get that cut out right now. So I might try to get this cut out and then try to run some errands before I come back to it. And the incredibly hot tea that I am balancing on my lap waiting for it to cool down is Russian tea, which is a blend that I got from a place, I think it was called Wolf's Moon Apothecary. I got it at the Louisiana Renaissance Festival last year. And it is a blend of Sri Lankan and Assam teas. And it is very delicious. And I'm going to be honest, this is the first black tea that I've tried that I genuinely liked. And now that I know that I like black tea, rip to any chance I ever had of wanting and having white teeth. Just in time for my wedding. All right, so here's kind of the top section of the pattern laid out. So you can't really see it because my camera's far away and I'm too lazy to take it off of the tripod, but I marked out one inch from this edge right here because that's going to wind up being the side seam, side seam. So I just marked out one inch from there and that's where I'm gonna cut it on instead. I also went ahead and added a half an inch, so it's gonna be a total of one inch um, to this center seam because I did notice that the bust darts on me were a little bit center of my actual bust and I wanted to push those out a little bit. So this is going to add an inch and a half to each side. And this is probably going to wind up being slightly bigger than I needed to because I also just tried on my mock-up from, I don't know, three weeks ago. And it already fits a little bit bigger than it did when I first made it. That's an eight hour day manual labor job for you. Another change that I'm making is I'm also lowering this sleeve, this arm side a little bit. I'm just lowering it by half an inch and I'm just kind of extending this curve out a little bit. So I'm gonna try to replicate that on the arm facing so that when I actually sew the facing in, everything is gonna lay nice. But I'm also predicting that I'm probably going to make sure that I cut out some bias binding of this fabric for that so that if I have to finish it with some seam binding or bias binding, um, I will have that available to do. What is on my hand? This don't buy pleather because it flakes off and gets all over everything. So I'm also going to add one inch to that side of the back piece I'm also pretty sure on the mock-up that when I folded it down to get that nice deep back, I think I accidentally folded it down lower than it was originally supposed to, so I'm gonna reevaluate that before I cut it out again. Because as it stands right now, I can in fact wear Spanx under this dress, but I do wanna be just double sure that my Spanx aren't gonna show through. And hopefully, hopefully, I will be able to cut all of this out on this piece of fabric. And as you can notice over there, the pattern extends a little bit beyond the fabric and I'm not overly concerned about it because all of pretty much all of this just gets added into one of the pleats so if one pleat isn't as full as the other one I'm okay with that because it's two pleats stacked on top of each other in the back 
but if I have enough leftover fabric, I marked just with a pencil line all the way down the uh, fabric that I'm like cutting off. And if I have to, I'll just cut another strip of fabric if I have the extra room and just sew that on real quick over there. And again, that's all gonna be hidden in the pleat. So hopefully you won't see that seam line and it won't be super noticeable. Also, real quick, something that I just remembered, I already started cutting, but since I'm moving this line, this edge out by an inch, I'm also going to have to move this dart. So I'll explain this better when we get there, but there is a dart in the pattern right here. And when you're looking at it, you might think that it doesn't really make sense and you're wondering how it works out. But the reason that dart is there is to kind of hide this seam when you put the, the back piece on. And instead of having to fiddle around a corner and seaming together a corner, you just sew those side seams together into a dart and a dart will form here. And it's a really, really cool way to kind of hide that seam and to make it and to make it not as fiddly. I really like this technique because it looks super complicated, but I promise it's not. But that dart does have to get moved a little bit. Basically what I'm gonna do to move that dart is just find all of the markings and just move them exactly one inch that way. Also make sure that you're paying attention to your grain lines, especially on these facing pieces and on the back piece, the back bodice piece, because the grain line doesn't always match up with any of the other straight lines on the piece. So just, you know, keep that in mind. And we'll pretend that's straighter than it actually is. So I know I literally just said, pay attention to the grain lines. However, when I'm laying out the skirt piece on this fabric, but this fabric has a pattern, which one side is clearly up and one side is down. Everything's upside down because this is just how I have the camera set up right now. However, there's really no way for me to arrange this skirt piece with the grain line straight and be able to fit both skirt pieces on here. I tried really hard. I got some, I even like got my yardstick out to measure, but it wound up being like six inches off and I, I wouldn't have been able to do it. So I am making the executive decision to instead line up this center back on the straight grain and just let this section kind of just fall wherever it is. So I think the point of putting the grain line here is that this area that the grain line is on is going to wind up being like the top of the pleat, which is going to be kind of the most prominent area of this pattern. So I think the pattern drafters originally wanted that to be straight. They wanted to make sure that if there was any pattern, then it would look good on that section. And I'm pretty sure that's the reason why this is the grain line, because if you look carefully, this grain line is not parallel with either of these two lines, which means that these two seams, both the center back and the side seam, are going to be slightly on the bias no matter what. So it's not going to create like the most structurally sound seam. So since cutting on this grain line is more of an aesthetic choice rather than a structural choice, and also because the fabric that I'm using, the pattern is a little bit more random, I'm just gonna go ahead and line up this center seam on the grain line, and that's just gonna give me just enough room to be able to cut this out, flip it, and then cut it out again over here. Well, I have done exactly what I told myself I was not going to do, and I am slightly disappointed, but not surprised. So it is currently Thursday morning at about 10.27, and unfortunately I have made absolutely no progress on my dress. And part of the reason for that is that all of the Joann's near me have been out of this fabric for a while. Like I bought the last of it at the store near me, and the store like 20 minutes away also doesn't have any. So I briefly considered ordering a couple more yards online and then having it shipped over very quickly, but all of that was gonna cost me about another $30. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm not really looking to spend $70 on this dress. So I might have to do things a little bit differently than the instructions. Because the instructions have you do this kind of like double pleat where you almost make two pleats and then stack them on top of each other. Because I realized when I was cutting this out, not only did I not have that extra like three to four inches on the side seam on the front panel, but I also forgot to cut out two inches to the back center back, which accounts for that two inches that I'm adding to make everything wider. So that's gonna wind up being a difference of about six inches less per side than what I initially needed to be working with. So hopefully I can still get a pleat in there. It might wind up being a smaller pleat and I might wind up having to kind of fiddle with it on my own. I'll do my best to show you what it would look like if you were doing this properly on your own. So I think for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make all of my marks for all of my darts and all of my notches and everything. Also, my mental health has not been super great lately, which also that being said, my room is going to be very messy for the remainder of this video and maybe for the next one. But if I stop to try to clean it, I'm going to get distracted and I'm not going to get to finish this dress and I need to finish this dress today. Let me bring you in for a little bit of a closer look on what I did for this back bodice piece. Now, hopefully now you'll be able to see. 
So when I open this up, here's how the piece comes in general. And this is the piece you would use as is if you wanted to do this higher back. So on the pattern, there are these three dots all in a line, or four dots rather. And the idea is that this is the line that you would follow if you wanted to make the lower back. Now the issue when you do that is that when you follow all the way down, I believe the original idea was to have this kind of cut in here so that that kind of five eighths of an inch overlap would be straight and make it a little bit easier to sew on a zipper. But part of the issue is that this line does not match up with this back facing piece. So in order to get this line that I drew in and sketched in on my own and then folded, I took this back facing piece. And when you're looking at these pieces, especially these because they don't have like notches in them, you can tell which side is going to be sewn based on these dots because these dots are going to help you line everything up to make sure that that is where you are sewing to essentially. So I was able to figure out that this flat edge goes on the top at the shoulder seam and this kind of angled section goes in the back. So what I did was I lined up these dots as best as I could and then I drew a line on this side and then used that to fold over and make that piece so that I could go ahead and make the back match the facing as opposed to trying to make this facing match the back that isn't perfect. And you might think that's not such a big deal, but if I were to take this facing and line up this top dot and follow this line all the way down here, you would see that the facing doesn't match up with the center back, which could potentially give you some issues when you go to sew the zipper in later on. As far as I could tell from my mock-up, all the other facings work and all of them work together very well. So this was the only one that I had a little bit of an issue with. I'm also showing you right now that I am electing to be bad and I did not cut off the selvage edge, which the selvage does stick out about a half an inch from what I need. So instead of trying to cut this perfectly into a very thin strip with my pinking shears, I'm just gonna take advantage of this. And I'm probably just gonna sew this with a slightly larger seam allowance to make sure that the selvage doesn't show on the finished garment. I know technically you should cut these off, but this is just gonna give a nice finish. And if this one seam is never gonna fray, then I am okay with that. All right, so let me try to walk you through what I did here. So this start, I was able to trace just where it was on the pattern when I had it pinned on. So that's, you know, a half inch away from the center seam because I was adding a half an inch there. For this side dart, I just kind of put the, the dots where they were. And I'm gonna do my best that once I get past this point, because there's another inch of material on this side off of this seam, to try to just kind of keep it straight so that I'm not taking a whole lot of extra fabric into that seam. This dart was a little bit of a pain. So basically what I did for this start was I unpinned the pattern and I moved it so that this corner of the pattern now sat on the corner of the fabric because again I added one inch to the seam so I just moved everything over by an inch marked these darts. Now when I moved all of this over that took this start um, really close to the edge of the fabric so that this line right here pretty much would have been in the seam allowance. So I wound up moving everything back a little bit just to be able to fit this dart in. And something kind of weird happens in the original and that this dart kind of gets hidden underneath this half of the pleat. So you don't see this dart, but this dart is kind of important to making sure that this square piece does kind of fit over your hip. So I wanted to keep this one in. But basically what I learned from doing this is I'm basically going to miss an entire pleat. Hold on, I need some scrap fabric to show you what's going on. But the way that the instructions want this box pleat to kind of be done is you're kind of folding this over here and then this on top over here. But the way that this pattern works out is this winds up being completely underneath. So you wind up with kind of this double pleat. So you have a lot of extra fabric in here. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this full kind of double pleat. I might have to kind of do it kind of on my own and just do this one regular like single pleat where they meet, where these pieces just kind of meet in the back instead of completely overlapping. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of my darts sewn. All right, now this pattern wants you to do something kind of interesting with these center darts. So I thought I would just kind of talk through what it wants you to do. So for this one, instead of pressing it to one side, which is what I would normally do, they actually want you to take this dart and they want you to cut down the center of it and then about an inch and a half, two inches from each point of it. And then for this little, these two center sections that we just cut, you're gonna cut along this fold and then press it open. So your seam's gonna look kinda like this. And then they want you to sew 
or to press these two points flat. Um, I couldn't get this one to open all the way, so I just pressed it to one side. I'm not too worried about it. And normally I wouldn't do this, but on my mock-up, when I just kind of pressed these to one side, it made the fabric tug and lay kind of weird, and I didn't like it. So this way, your darts are going to be nice and flat, and they're going to form to your body a little bit better. But yeah, so if you look closely, you'll see I have these two separate sections of the darts. All right, so I have all of my pieces nice and ironed and pressed and ready to go. Now the next step is to assemble the skirt. So I'm going to sew the back pieces of the skirt to the front piece at these side seams. I'm not gonna do anything to the center back just yet, but then once I have those seams done, so since I am working with less material than what the pattern called for, I'm not gonna be able to do those two full stacked kind of folded pleats the way that they want me to. So I need to figure out how much I need to fold this fabric down. So once I have that skirt side seam done, what I'm going to do, so I'm going to take the back bodice piece and baste it to this front bodice piece with a half inch seam allowance. But anyway, I'm going to get that basted together so that I can see exactly how much I need to gather the skirt down to. Because you have to do all the bits with the skirts before you sew, finish sewing the bodice together because this bottom edge of the back bodice has to get sewn onto the skirt before you flip it up and sew the back bodice onto the front bodice. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm kind of playing around with the fit. So the first thing I noticed when I basted my back bodice pieces on is that this dress wound up being entirely too big, which is very odd because, because the mock-up was like really too small. So I added in like five inches all around to make it a little bit nice and comfortable and to bring it up to my actual body measurements. And now it is like six inches too big. So I don't know how that happened quite yet. Also, I promise I have pants on. So the first thing that I did to try to play around with this was I added a line of pins one inch in from these side seams. Now the issue with that is that the front bodice, naturally on my half inch seam allowance, that line fits perfectly on my side. I like where that fits on my side. It's just the back wound up being way too big, which I'll actually show you right now. So here's the bodice with the regular half inch seam allowance that I used all the way around. Now when I kind of tighten this and I want to fasten it in the back on my center back, you'll notice there's a lot of extra material in the back. But if you look at it from the front, this side seam fits almost perfectly on my side. It could stand to be moved up about half an inch. But if I only took half an inch in from my side seams, I don't know if you can see, I can see it in the mirror, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. No, this could stand to be moved about a half inch forward. So now the next thing I'm going to do to try to play with the fit is do a half inch smaller seam allowance all the way around. So I'm going to get that pinned and then take a look at it. Alright, so here's the situation with the bodice and what I have now. So now I have it pinned in about another half an inch from the seam allowance. And this still has the seam sitting nicely at my sides, which I like, so I think that's going to be my side adjustment. And I did my best to kind of pin behind me to see how much I need to take the back in. So this is probably about two inches. I'll try to measure this, get a mark in and measure it um, before I actually put the zipper in. Because this is kind of the measurement that I need to be able to gather the skirt down to, plus the seam allowance. So I need to get this figured out now before I can get the skirt pleated down. So this does bring the back up a little bit higher than I was hoping. But at this point, I'm just picking my battles. I'm okay with it. I might try to adjust it a little bit when I put the facing in. I might try to lower it a little bit. Haven't quite decided yet. I might try to baste a zipper in here and try this on with a couple of different bras to see if I can wear a bra with this now, if the back's high enough, which would be nice. Speaking of bras, I'm probably going to have to take these darts in a little bit and do some adjustments there because when you're a triple D, standard size patterns are not meant for you. Because yes, my bust measurement puts me in a bigger size quality of dress, but my proportions of my waist to my bust don't really match that too well. Now that I have a little bit of a higher back, it's not as much of an issue, but when I had a lower back, I was noticing a lot of gaping here. I figured out to fix that, I'm going to have to do some adjustment on the shoulders, which basically means I'm going to have to take a bigger seam allowance kind of at the inner shoulder towards the neck and make a smaller seam allowance out towards the arm. And just doing that's going to put a little bit more tension on that back piece and it's going to smooth it out a little bit nicer. So once I kind of figure out my measurements and I get these side bits attached, I'm probably going to do something similar where I'm going to baste the shoulder and then adjust it before I sew it in for real. So the next thing I did was I played around a little bit with this pleat to just see how I wanted to do it. So this side, as you can notice, I think that's the right side. Maybe? I 
forgot which side is which. So for this side, I did kind of the, the fold it and then flatten it. This is the kind of other way to do a box pleat. And I think I'm actually going to try to do this side, which is very similar to the pleat that they have you do in the instructions. And I think I like this one better because it's a little bit narrower, um, which I think looks a little more flattering than the big wide one. So the issue now is now that I have less fabric, this pleat, this seam kind of falls right at the edge of the pleat, which makes it a little bit more visible, but I'm kind of hoping that once I get this pressed, it's not going to be as big of a deal. All right, so I've gone ahead and unpicked this basting seam right here. And in order to line this up properly, I need to look at where I had my extra line of pins matched up on this piece and on this piece. Now I didn't make a mark, but I still can kind of see the little marks of where the pins were. So what I did is I know I'm eventually going to have to sew these right sides together. So I lined up, it's difficult to see, but I lined up this um, front bodice piece line, line of pins where I adjusted it and the side and the back bodice piece line of pins where I adjusted it. And I did a quick line of pins where where everything's going to wind up meeting. So the first thing I'm going to do is line up this edge with that line of pins I just made and that's going to make sure and that's just going to keep all of my math straight to make sure that everything gets gathered down to the right amount. I'm also going to make sure that I overlap this by half an inch because that's going to be my seam allowance. And if we come over here, this is my line of pins where I'm marking where I want that center back to be. So now I'm going to take a pin and mark about, let's say, 5 eighths of an inch away from that. And that's going to be where I want this edge to sit. Now, since I have a little bit of a selvage edge on here, I don't want that to be too close to the seam. So I'm actually going to line that selvage edge up with that pin. And I might wind up having a little bit more of a seam allowance on this side than normal. But I'm okay with that. So for right now, I'm just going to pin this in place to keep everything nice and, and kind of stuck while I'm working on this. So let's chat a little bit about this dress, shall we? So it's been probably close to a month since I last started working on this dress. And basically what happened was right when I got to the pleating, which is the part that like needed a little bit of explanation, my batteries and my camera died. And because I didn't think I would need them, I didn't have my backup batteries charging but I needed to try to have this dress done to leave in like two days. So I really couldn't afford to wait the like three to four hours to get my batteries to fully charge. So I just kind of moved on. So I'm gonna be honest, I'm not entirely sure where I left off this footage. I'm not entirely sure what the last thing I filmed was. And I kind of decided at that point that I didn't really want to keep filming this project because things were just kept working out really weird. Like, I'm not entirely sure how I got the math so wrong on the bodice pieces, but everything still worked out perfectly. I have no idea how that happened. So I'm not sure if I want to be like, oh yeah, do this, 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 and this, and I'm going to move this around, and I'm going to take a couple inches off of here, and then move this around. Because I have absolutely no idea how that worked out. So I have not touched this dress in a month. And to be honest, I'm a little bit nervous too, because the job that I was working kept me really active, so I started to lose like the tiniest little bit of weight. And then I took a week off of that job to go be a tourist in New Orleans, which if you don't gain at least 10 pounds during your tourist vacation to New Orleans, you didn't do New Orleans right. And that's coming from a local, so you know it's true. So I'm going to be honest, I have no idea if this dress is even going to fit me. So I know if I try to get into this dress and I try to zip it up and it won't go up, I am not going to be a happy camper. But I feel like I vaguely remember that I managed to get the pleats done. I don't entirely remember how I did them. And I also think the next thing that I had to do was the shoulders because I think I figured out how to fix that kind of gaping in the back was to take the shoulders in and to angle the shoulders. So instead of having two like straight seams on the shoulder, you kind of angle them a little bit. So it's going to make the shoulders fit your body a little closer and it's going to add a little bit more tension to that kind of inner edge and it's going to make it lay flatter against your back. So I think I figured out that's what I need to do. And I think my next step was to mark where the shoulders needed to be sewed. And I think once I have that, then I can start working on all of the facings. So I'm going to try to clean up my space a little bit because I have a lot of stuff going on, like a lot all over the place. And I'm going to see if I can even fit in this dress to see if it's worth trying to finish. Because if it doesn't fit, I think I'm just going to put it away and pretend it doesn't exist. Because let me tell you, nothing boosts your body confidence like sitting down on your desk chair and it just buckling out from under you. All right, so I just zipped it up and it fits and I have a little bit of room to breathe and to eat. So I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, 
So yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and move forward with this project. So here's kind of what the pleats look like. I'm gonna try to deconstruct these for you and, and kind of show you how I wound up doing them. I notice a lot of the place that I have issues with in the fit is the, uh, the boobage area. Because <laughs> I notice with a lot of vintage patterns, the places where I have a lot of fit issues are kind of with the, the bust area. Because it's so weird because even though these patterns kind of want you to have this like perfect standardized hourglass shape, once you get up to the waist size that I need, the bust size doesn't always match up. But since this does have such a low back, I do have a little bit more freedom in this area. So now that I know it fits, um, I'm gonna go make a sandwich because I have a little kitty cat screaming at me telling me that it is turkey time. Hi! Do you wanna come say hi? Say, Mom, it's time for my daily turkey. It's time for my turkey snack. All right, let's go. Oh, I got cat hair all over this. All right, so now my next step is to try to work on these shoulder seams and placing where I'd like these to be. Um, so I'm just kind of looking around. So I'm just kind of doing this by looking in the mirror and adjusting until I have a point where I like the tension on it. And I feel like I like this shoulder a little bit better right now. It's um, it's pulled a little bit further backwards. And I think once I get this sewn like all the way across, um, it's gonna lay really nicely. So now I'm gonna try to make this shoulder look like that one. Yes, I know, don't stick your pins in your mouth. Or y'all do it. That didn't even go through. Uh, this is difficult. So that's pretty close. It's not perfect, but it's close enough for government work. All right, so now I'm gonna try to mark these lines and get this sewn on. All right, so here are the shoulders. Here is how they are looking. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I'm looking in my mirror over here and I'm noticing that this arm side comes up really high. Um, and I was thinking about lowering it by about three quarters of an inch, half an inch, somewhere around there. And then I remembered that once I sew the facings in, it will essentially just do that for me. Um, so I'm not gonna worry too much about it. I also referred back to the original like diagram of the drawing and it does look like it's supposed to be kind of slightly capped sleeve, very, very slightly like off the shoulder. So I think I'm just gonna leave this where it is. So I'm going to go ahead and get this pressed open and now I'm going to have to go back and adjust my facings and take in that shoulder seam, the same amount that I took in this shoulder seam so that everything will line up and uh, just line up nicely. All right, so hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing here um, as I'm doing these facings. So to mark my facings and to mark where I need to take them in at the shoulder seam, um, I'm kind of putting them on in the configuration that would they would be once the facings are like fully on and fully installed. Yeah, so this is not how you would sew them on. You, you'd flip it to sew it. Um, but this is how I'm going to get the most accurate like final measurement to make it fit the best at the end. Um, so I already kind of did it on this one where I just lined it all up and just pinned it to get a rough pin to get the shape. And then when I got to this top shoulder seam, um, I started from the bottom and then pinned all the way up and then when I got to this top shoulder seam I just kind of pinned uh, right next to that seam and then I just pinched uh, until it matched up and then I just put a couple of lines of pins there and that's how I know where I'm going to take that in. So now the next step is to actually install the facings. So for your armholes you're going to match up your shoulder seams and your side seams. So you're just going to make sure that you have the right one. In theory, there are some little triangles drawn on here somewhere to help you match everything up. So you're going to pin this and you're going to sew it. Now, especially for these underarm facings, I'm going to clip into the seam once it's sewn on. And that's going to help it kind of be able to spread and, and compress as it needs to because curves need to move around a little bit. I'm also going to go ahead and understitch these facings. Since I've already gone ahead and installed the zipper, the way that I'm going to do this is when I get to this edge, when I get to the zipper, is I'm going to pin and I'm going to match this up. And then when I get to the end, I'm going to sew over the zipper teeth and then I'm going to pivot as soon as I get over it. And then I'm going to sew straight down along the teeth. I'm gonna to try to get as close to them as possible. So when I'm done and I'm able to flip everything out, that end of the zipper is going to be nicely enclosed within the fabric itself. Now, if you wanted to do a little bit of an extra step and finish off the spacing, you could do it a couple of ways. If you wanted to, you could simply fold this under and either press it or stitch it. 
And that way, once everything's done and you flip it over the right side, you have this neat little edge. And that's probably what I'm going to do. Mostly because I overshot this bobbin and I wound two very, 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 very full bobbins for this project. If you would like to, you can also go ahead and make some matching bias tape and bias bind these edges real quick. I'm not going to do that method because it's going to add a little bit of bulk to this edge, and since this material is only one layer of cotton, it's a little bit thinner, and adding that bulky edge will probably be seen from the outside. So I'm probably just going to real quick turn this under and stitch it. I might not even press it because this is going on the inside, so it doesn't need to be super, super neat. All right, so let me try to show you a little bit of what's going on with this zipper situation because I have to start down here before I can pivot and bring everything across. So here is the zipper tape. Here's the teeth. The teeth are facing the garment. They're not facing the seam allowance. They're facing the garment. That part is important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of lower my presser foot so that I can feel and you'll be able to feel that it's not all the way down pressing as flat as can be and that's how you know that you have at least one piece of this on the teeth and that's what I'm going for I don't need this to be super close it's not like that this is part of the invisible zipper this is going to be on the inside so this doesn't need to be like super close right up against the teeth I'm really just going for something a little bit close so what I'm going to do is start off by back stitching a couple of stitches taking out my pins as I go because I'm going to be good and I'm still feeling to make sure that I'm on both on the tape and I could feel this little ridge because I definitely don't want to sew over it right now. We'll get there in a second. So I'm going to sew and sew and sew until I get closer to this corner here. So I'm going to aim for a half inch diagonally so that's going to be close to my half inch seam allowance. Once I get there, I have about two more stitches. One, two. I'm going to lower, or one more. I'm going to lower my needle. I'm going to pivot and start making my way up the top of the garment. So now I'm going to sew over the zipper teeth. If you have a fussy machine, I'd suggest maybe doing that by hand. But now I'm just going to sew all along the top of this garment and then I'm gonna do the same thing but kind of in reverse when I get to the other edge so now that I have my zipper sewn the way that I did it once I turn all of this right side out the edge of that zipper is going to be nice and neatly encased so we're not gonna have to worry about actually finishing off the zipper because the the zip stop will kind of naturally stop be there because there's nowhere for it to go so now you have a neatly finished zipper so now the next step for the neck facing is to clip this corner, clip off, go ahead and clip off the extra of this zipper. And I'm also going to add a couple little notches in around the curves just to help it turn a little bit better. So now I'm going to install the arm facings, which are done pretty much the same way, right sides together, match everything up and just circle around it. All right. So here I have two tips for you. One is a do as I say, not as I do. Uh, clear liquids around your important projects. Don't don't do this. Um, second tip that I want to give you is most machines, if you're not aware, have a removable part here that basically shrinks this down that allows you to get armholes on a lot easier. So I am the type of person that I am very dumb and I don't try to take things apart. So if you didn't know about that, here you go. So when I understitched the neck facing, this one was pretty easy. There's not a whole lot um, to it. It's not a whole lot of turning. This was relatively easy, but I did want to point out that I really only did this top edge. So, oof, got to clip those. So for this corners where zipper kind of attaches and goes out, I made a quick little notch just in the seam allowance to that zipper. And I only went from corner to corner. So I didn't bother understitching down here where the zipper is. I just did the top. And that's because the zipper itself will kind of function as its own understitching. So when you zip the zipper, there will be a little bit of tension put on the teeth and that will keep the zipper kind of pulling everything this way. And that will keep everything underneath kind of getting tucked underneath. So now my next step is to iron all of this and to press this and then to tack all of this under itself. And full disclosure, I might wind up being re really lazy and just kind of folding this under and like stitching in the ditch here, uh, just to save myself a little bit of hand sewing. We'll see. 
All right, and here is the dress with the facings nicely turned under. The only places that weren't perfectly turned under are right here in the armpit, but honestly, if anybody is that close to my armpit to notice them, like they have other problems going on. So I'm gonna save all of the hand stitching for tomorrow because I am lazy and just don't feel like doing it tonight. So I think the only thing I really have to do to finish off this dress is do the hem. So I'm going to let this hang overnight because even though the front is straight across and it was cut on the cross grain, it's cut straight. The back was cut with a little bit of a curve to it, so a little bit of like a partial circle skirt. So part of that was cut on the bias, so I am going to let this hang to settle before I do the hem. And then once the hem is done, we have a finished dress. All right, so here is the top all fully done and fully tacked down. So I did the shoulder seam by machine, but I did everything else by hand, just a couple little tacking stitches every couple of inches. So now the next step is to hem. So the instructions call for a two inch hem. So the way that I'm going to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and do a rolled hem. So the way that I'm going to do that is first of all, I'm going to trim this extra two inches from the front. I'm not quite sure how I wound up with two inches longer in the front than in the back. I don't know, something weird happened. Anyway, I'm going to cut off that extra two inches and then I'm going to turn my dress inside out. I'm going to make a mark one inch up from the bottom and then another mark four inches up from the bottom. So I'm going to do my first fold and I'm gonna fold the fabric up to meet that one inch line and I'm gonna give that a nice press and then from there, I'm going to fold that up to meet the four inch line and go ahead and give that a nice press. I'm probably gonna be lazy because this is cotton and cotton presses really well and it kind of stays where it's supposed to. So I'm only gonna do one round of stitching around the hem. I'm not gonna bother doing that rolled hem part. And then essentially I'm finished with the dress. Now an extra thing that I'm going to do, there are a couple of spots in these darts where I had to nip into the dart to press them open to get everything to lay nice and flat. I'm probably gonna hit those points with a little bit of fray check just because there's not a whole lot of fabric there and I know eventually with wear and tear that fabric will kind of pull apart and it'll start to unravel so I am gonna hit that with a little bit of fray check but other than that we're done. Y'all I just got locked out of my house. It's like 98 degrees out here. I'm gonna die of heat stroke. It's gonna be like another three or four hours before anybody gets home. Are you kidding me? Like I came out of this door. I'm gonna die. This is how I die. This is how I die. It's 98 degrees out. I locked myself out of my house. I don't have my phone. And I'm wearing Spanx. Well, at least I'm stuck outside in a nice light summer sundress instead of a, uh, I don't know, like velvet ball gown. That would suck. So I guess I can go ahead and do my wrap up out here on my uh, side porch, or rather the carport. So all in all, do I recommend this pattern? Yes, I think this is a very cute pattern. I like how it came together. It came together rather simply, aside from the little weird math thing that was happening that was a little odd. I'm not quite sure how I messed up doing all these side seams as badly as I did, but somehow it worked out. I guess the uh, long story short here is always wear a muck up and uh, always double check to make sure that you don't accidentally lock yourself outside your own house. So now I guess I just have to wait for uh, one of my neighbors to come home to call maintenance or wait the four and a half hours before my man finally comes home or hope the cat suddenly grows opposable thumbs and can unlock this door for me. Cause I've been trying to Nancy Drew my way in and it's not working. You know, I was hoping my hair would still look good by the time I had to go to work tonight, but um, yeah, it's not gonna happen. I don't even have a hair tie. I can't even like pull my hair back off my face. This is miserable. I'm legit gonna get heat stroke out here. And that was the process of making this dress. So again, I'm super happy with how it turned out. I think it turned out really cute. I'm really happy with it. This is definitely a pattern that benefits from making a mock-up because a couple little things don't go together the way that you think they do. As an example, kind of joining that seam inside of the dart. It's a really smart way to do that, and I really like how they did that, but if you haven't done it before, it can get a little bit confusing. I know I was definitely confused the first time that I did that. Also, the whole thing with the back and the back facings not lining up and the little dots and the lines not lining up perfectly. It's really honestly not that big of a deal. So if you're making that lower back, it definitely is worth a mock-up to make sure you get that angle right, because the actual length of that opening is pretty long because it has to transverse most of your back. So you don't think being off by like a tiny little bit would make a big difference, but when that line is that long, if you're off by even one or two degrees just at the, the top corner, 
that could mean the difference of your back line being raised or lowered by two or three inches. I also did my zipper a little bit differently than how they wanted you to do it in the instructions, mostly because I was using an invisible zipper and in the early 1960s, invisible zippers weren't really a thing yet. So something that didn't apply to me because of the alterations that I made. So when installing the zipper, the instructions have you sew the zipper down the bodice. So they have you sew the zipper down the bodice. They have you break that stitching, pick up your needle, move the pleat of the skirt and then put your needle back down and then sew the lower half, break that stitching, move the other pleat, move your stitching and do the bodice because ideally your pleats in the back should be so close together that they almost touch. Mine didn't quite work out like that. I'm not too worried about it. I still think it looks pretty good, but I had a decent amount of room between my pleats in the back. I also don't remember which project I made recently that had you kind of hide the zipper within itself. But I remember I really liked that method of installing the zipper, especially when you have like a facing. So I just did that. Honestly, I'm kind of at the point where I don't really follow the instructions to the letter, which I really should be doing because I'm kind of a pattern review channel at this point, And part of reviewing the pattern is reviewing the instructions. But there was that kind of part in the middle where I was just kind of rushing to get everything finished because I was trying to get everything done because I had to leave in like two days. Didn't get it finished on time, but that's okay. But I do want to talk about this little instruction packet real quick because the seller did a really great job like putting a whole bunch of useful stuff in here. Like there's information on how to measure yourself. There's a little chart where you can put your own measurements in there and it's it's a lot of measurements. Like there's a lot of information in there. You don't need all of this for this pattern, but it's pretty helpful information. Inform there's a whole bunch of conversion charts so you can convert things from imperial to metric. There's a whole bunch of like tips and tricks and then in the back there, there's this fabric worksheet where you can like put a swatch of your fabric and you can write down the care instructions and how much you bought and stuff like that so and then there's a little blurb about what life was like in the 1960s so there was there was a lot of really good information in here i'm pretty i'm pretty pleased with all of the extra stuff in here i didn't use any of it but you know i like that it was thrown in there i do like that a lot so at the end of the day, would I recommend this pattern? In general, yes, I think this is a very good pattern. I liked how it went together. I think it made a very cute design. The instructions were pretty clear. My only kind of little like caveat to that is that I wouldn't really recommend this if you are bigger than a size 18. So sizing this pattern up was pretty difficult. And part of the reason for this was the seams never actually quite lined up. And what I mean by that is that the front was all cut in one piece. So there was a seam for these darts in the center where the like side front piece attached to the front piece. So there was a little bit of a dart there, but you didn't have a whole lot of room to play around with that because you needed everything to line up properly. And then in order to make those pleats in the back, you need a whole lot of extra room on the sides. So your side seams where you're connecting that front piece to the back piece at the sides, that doesn't wind up laying at your actual sides and it doesn't wind up matching up with the side seams of the bodice. So there's no real good way to properly take this in or let it out. I imagine it would be a lot easier to take this in. So if you were like a size, so if you're like a size 16 or like a 14, you might be able to make this work, but going up from this size was a lot more difficult. Like I believe I was also able to add a little bit of room to the center back seam and a little tiny bit to the center front, which is pretty much all you can do in this scenario. So that works for me because my body is, I'm comparatively flat, but I'm kind of wide. So in order to make those bust darts line up to be under my bust, I have to kind of push them to the side anyway. So that works for me. Doesn't work for all body types. So I would really recommend this if you were already a size 18, or if you have a little bit more advanced knowledge of like pattern drafting and pattern grading, because it is a little bit harder to grade these vintage patterns as opposed to modern patterns because with modern patterns when you see all of the sizes listed out and you see all of the lines you're able to kind of extrapolate from that where the next size up or two sizes up should be and you can see exactly where those changes are being made but when you only have the one size to look at you kind of have to guess and, and make your best guesstimation. Oh, another thing I wanted to point out, I don't know if this was because of a change that I made when I was grading this pattern up or if this is just how the pattern was, um, but this armpit, this arm side is very high under the armpit. Bringing this arm side up was pretty common until relatively recently in human history. 
in modern day and in modern fashion. We like our arm size to be cut kind of low because we think it gives us more movement, but in reality it doesn't. So only if it's sleepless, then it does. So if you get uncomfortable with things being up in your armpits, you may want to know that going into it so you can lower your arm size a little bit. So yeah, that was my experience with this pattern. I, at the end of the day, I really like how my dress turned out. I had a pretty good time making it, even if I did have to do some weird fudging things to make things work. But at the end of the day, it worked and I liked it. So that's a win. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, if you could leave me a, a like, a comment, a subscribe, all those fun YouTube things, that would help me out a lot. If you're interested in some behind the scenes stuff, including some sneak peeks into stuff that may or may not be making it to YouTube, some stuff may uh, not be making it to YouTube for another couple of years, feel free to give me a follow on Instagram over at Thread and Needlefish. That's where I post all kinds of fun sneak peeks behind the scenes stuff. If you're interested in tea, which I am not drinking today because, because I am in the middle of Georgia in the middle of summer and it's like 90 something degrees outside, it's, uh, it's a little too hot for some hot tea. And my refrigerator is not working right, so, uh, so cold and iced tea is a bit of a tall order right now. But if you're interested in tea, I do also have a second tea Instagram, it's Architethis. Say that name's a little more niche because the scientific name of the giant squid is Architeuthis. And I like squids and I like tea, so Architeuthis, yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. So I have, oh kitten, you spooked me. You spooked me. Lils, do you want to come over here? I have your blanket all nice for you. Lils, I have your blanket. No, okay. I'm just going to sniff everything I own instead. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> Lils, you're going to be in this video whether you want to or not. Oh, oh. See, Mom, it's time for my daily turkey. It's time for my turkey snack. You're late. You're late. Down. That was kind of rude. Smack me. It'll be funny. Do it. Do it. You won't. Okay, let's go get you some turkey. All right, let's go. I also did my zipper a little bit differently. You let one potato go bad, and now your entire house, just entire house, has been taken over by fruit flies and they are driving me nuts.